Do you want to know how to get a load of worms? Very easily. If you haven't got much garden space, if you've got a small plot of soil. These took me only minutes to get hold of. Look at all those. There's a mixture in there of lobs and breadworms. Anyway, stick on this video if you want to know how to get them without needing even a compost or a tiered wormery system. I'll be showing you. And also guys, do take time to subscribe to the channel. Now that's a lot of perch bait, me thinks. Well guys, I will lead into a more in-depth video on my, or should I say our, worm composts and also more in-depth video with this tiered wormery. You've got different layers where the worms feed through with your, your vegetable scraps and they process that and they produce what's known in gardening as liquid gold. And it's this kind of thick gravy brown, almost tinged black liquid known as bokashi. Now I know a lot of you guys, although you're anglers and you want to breed some worms, but you're also, a lot of you do like to grow your veg and this is a superb fertilizer. So you're getting a lovely double pronged effect. You're getting a wormery, you're getting a steady, healthy supply of dendrobinas, but you're also getting superb fertilizer, be that for your vegetables or your plants. And I'll lead on to this particular one in a separate video. Well, trying to film, <laughs> he wants to be the star of the show, so say hello to Elvis, guys. Hello, lads. He's my fishing companion, you could say. He's a F4 Savannah. He's a lovely lad, and he's always inquisitive. So I thought I'd show you him, because he's come flying around to check out the, um, <laughs> check out what I'm filming. As you can see, he's, he's a lovely boy. <laughs> he's lively. I think he wants to go and hunt pigeons. But yeah, lovely, lovely chap. Ah, oh, it's beautiful. Anyway, don't mind if I film, do you? <laughs> so, not on the other video that I'm going to be doing, which is going to cover the the main wormery. We've also got these two here, and a couple of others, which are standard compost, which, as the name suggests, compost your vegetable scraps, tea bags card everything and they've got a healthy helping of red worms in too so I can always dive into these as well but what, as I say what I'm going to show you today is a very simple way if you don't have room for a compost if you don't have room for an actual full-size tiered wormery you can and you've got a little bit of garden you can get your worms quite simple now the old trick of using washing up liquid it's, it's don't get me wrong it's all right it does work you rinse the worms off afterwards after you put washing up liquid down on the soil but regards to you washing them off the, the actual life span of the worms isn't quite as good it really isn't trust me it might only you might lose a few days of, of extra life on them but the detergent does actually affect them when they come up through the soil and I can promise you they do not last as long I've used the washing up technique a good amount of times in my younger years making myself sound really old but <laughs> honestly they don't last as long so the technique I'm going to show you today you can use corrugated cardboard you can use hessian bags you know like your potato cloth potato sacks you can use old bits of carpet anything that you can wet down but I do stress ideally corrugated cardboard you know if your big cardboard boxes strip it down break them flat lay them flat and push them into the soil then wet them down the worms like the corrugated cardboard they eat through it it keeps it brings them to the top as you're keeping it damp because you're keeping that layer of condensation so in hot weather they're more likely to be near the surface layer of the soil so you can collect them easy you haven't got to dig about too much and even then when you do dig about a little bit you'll find them at the upper layer of the soil on top of that they love to move in between the corrugated layers and you'll actually find over time where you've got it on the soil that the actual worms themselves are breeding in between the cardboard now you haven't got to have the cardboard down for that long to actually get the worms to come to the top and start staying at a surface level and surface layer of the soil wet it down over a course of a couple of days making sure to keep it damp and you'll find that you'll have plentiful supply of worms <laughs> just watching the cat here he's gonna jump up on this tripod any moment Elvis no <laughs> any ah, he's doing it cheeky salt <laughs> anyway um, so yeah, let's move over and I'll show you the other area where we've got this cardboard technique. 
Right, so all you basically need, this is, you can use much larger than this depending on what cardboard you can get your hands on. Nice bit of corrugated cardboard, I'd recommend doubling up on it. What you want to do, wet the area of soil down prior, then press with your feet, with your hands, with your bum if you want, by sitting on it. <laughs> press it in to the soil really firmly so it's really pushed in. Then wet the cardboard down until it's really, really soaked and damp. And then make sure it's really firmly pressed into the soil. So when you've got your hot weather, you're creating a damp section of soil that stays damp for longer. Also attracts the worms to come up and also feed on the cardboard, move in between the cardboard, the corrugated sections, they love to do that. And they also, as I say, they breed. You'll find you'll, after a certain amount of time, if you're doing this regularly, you'll get eggs, little white eggs, and that's baby worms. Anyway, in true Blue Peter fashion, let's lift this cardboard up here and see how many worms there are. Absolutely stacked. They're all on the surface. There you go. As you can see just from there, they love getting in between the corrugated cardboard. And in my hand, already off the surface, there's over 13 there. Grab these two, 14, another one in between cardboard, 15, 16. Look at that. And that's with hardly any effort. That's just putting cardboard down and making sure it's squashed into the soil and you keep it damp. Look at that. Uh, that's a nice easy way to get you some great, I mean, lobworms are good, they really are cracking bait, but your redworms, your dendros, some of the best bream, tench, barbel, and certainly perch baits. And these were what you've seen me had that lovely £3 plus perch on on my recent videos. And you're not, as I say, it's not too much effort, which is nice in cutting, cutting the tasks out not having to dig too much but what you also find if you do dig where you've got the area covered with card that you will find that there's a lot more worms closer to the surface because of the condensation and that nice base layer of damp that you've created these there's around about nine there they were just taken beneath the surface all close to the top due to the fact you're keeping a nice damp layer above them. In a way you could say tricking them to come to the surface. Right as I say so when you're done press the earth and soil all back down nice and firm with your feet then get some fresh cardboard back on top push that down so it's really condensed against the soil then wet it down really 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 thoroughly because this cardboard will take a lot of water before it becomes waterlogged and you want that water to stay on there for a while before it needs topping up with more fresh water. What I would also recommend if you've got any spare bricks just place that on the cardboard too. This keeps it pinned down.
now what I'm doing is just pushing the card into the soil a bit so it's really nice and tight. Give it a firm, good press. Really, really nice and firm. Right, this needs to be wetted down more, but as you can see, I've already started to saturate it. You want it well wetted. You don't want any lighter coloured patches like you see here. You want it nice and dark, nice and saturated, and that'll hold the water in very, very well for you. Help to keep the worms coming to the surface in dry conditions. Very, very simple and effective. Well, there you go, guys. The proof is in the worming. That's just... I would say around about 75% of them are just under the carbol. A few lobworms mixed in for good bonus measure. Lots of lively redworms. And I'd say 35% were no more than an inch below the surface. All brought up by keeping a nice bit of damp, corrugated carbol on top of the surface of the soil. As I say, brilliant, brilliant baits for your perch fishing. Bream, tench, chub good barbel bait too especially especially autumn time anyway get them packed away into a tub now I feed these with vegetable scraps potato peelings banana don't put too any citrus in if you do put citrus peel in say orange or lemon don't give them too much they don't like that as much also if you don't have too much vegetable scraps you can feed these quite happily on damp cardboard and eggshell Eggshell's very important. It does give them a firmer skin for when you're hooking. Same as when you use moss with worms. And also, it promotes them to have very good calcium levels and good health and good longevity. So there we have it, guys. That is one of the ways. If you haven't got much room in your garden, you've got a little plot of soil, you don't have compost, you don't have a tiered wormery system, that you can get worms quickly, effectively, and also keep them towards the surface so they're there when you want them, at their most freshest, in hot conditions. And also, that is a tactic that I use even in autumn. Sometimes, with the compost, the worms are going to be further down and you've got to dig them out. That way, they're near the surface and they're ready to be taken. So, got a nice full pot of worms. And believe me guys, lobworms are brilliant, but red worms, or as they're known, dendros, dendrobenas, they're one of the most liveliest little worms and they're great. You can fish them in a very nice finessed manner. Uh, it's on small hooks. Or you can fish them as a multiple cluster of worms. Get that real kind of Medusa wriggling effect. But they're superb. Great perch bait. Great tench, barbel, bream. You name it. Chub, roach, gudgeon. They love them. So whatever your favoured method be that trotting, leisuring, feeding them with uh, fishing them with a feeder go for it and that's a nice simple way as I say of getting them we'll lead on to a more in-depth video of using and keeping worms in a compost keeping them in the tiered wormery that you've seen at the start of the video but that's going to require more in length and in-depth video but I will be leading on to that in due course anyway what's more to say if you've gone and done the same now let me know how you've got on let me know if this has helped you get some extra worms. And if you have liked the video, give it a thumbs up and do subscribe and share the video on your group pages or on your Facebook pages. Anyway, I think it's time to get out with some of these and go fishing, don't you? See you on another video.